By the same logic, the demand for means of production has shifted to the right. I'll write this new, signify this old. And hence, by the same logic, the price of the C good, now I'll start it over here, the unit value, because don't forget, price is always a unit value. So the value of C divided by the number of C goods produced, that remains unchanged. So I'm assuming here there's no socially, there's no change in the socially necessary abstract labor time to produce the C goods, okay, in the means of production industry. That's what I mean by C goods. Whilst at the same time, the increase in demand for means of production means a higher price for the, 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 the means of production. So here too we have a deviation as a result of this expansion, okay? So, to remind you where we are, the expansion, the K star plus the lambda that's rising, that's in turn caused an impact on these two major markets. There's impact on other markets as well, but I'm going to focus on these, <coughs> excuse me, impact on the labor power market, means of production, which is generally a rise in prices in those respective markets. Okay, that's the first step. Second step, we want to ask now, what's the consequence of this rise in prices in these two important markets? So I'm going to erase the board and begin to answer that question. Okay. Let's take the labor power market first. Workers then get a higher price of labor power. Capitalists have to pay this. That's the, all the workers, the value of labor power. But workers now are getting something extra that the capitalists have to pay, right? The cap, I'll put it here again. Supply of labor power, demand for labor power, the shift in the demand for labor power to the new. So this is the extra, this right here. Okay, that's what I mean by the extra. So the value for all the workers has remained the change, has remained unchanged, because there's no change in the socially necessary abstract labor time to produce those wage goods. But, <coughs> but the capitalists have to pay, and then the workers receive something extra. So we, I want to examine now what is this extra. Well, in order for the capitalists to get access to labor power, they have to pay, as it were, a premium to the workers to gain access to labor power, a higher price. So the workers are in a favored position because of a change on the labor market in which they can sell their labor power for more than what it's worth. Remember worth now. Worth for Marx is the, socially is the abstract labor, the socially necessary abstract labor time, in this case, to produce the wage goods to reproduce that labor power. But that labor power is worth more in market prices than it literally cost in value prices. That's what this deviation means. So we can write that the capitalists have to take a portion of their surplus and distribute it to workers to gain access to that labor power commodity which they, necessar which they need in order to produce. So this extra is a subsumed class payment and a subsumed class receipt for the workers, a subsumed class payment that the capitalists have to pay to the workers to gain access to this labor power. So that's a cost, an extra cost to the, to the capitalists, and of course it's an extra revenue to the workers. I'll come back to the revenues in a moment. I just want to examine this cost. By the same logic, this is in labor power. By the same logic, we have a price of the means of production, okay, that the worker, that the uh, um, capitalists have to pay, pay, and a premium to get access to the same um, means of production. So the capitalists to get the machines, raw materials, and so forth because of a shift. I mean, I'll write it over here. Supply of means of production, demand for means of production. So the curve has shifted to the right. We have this new demand curve 
for the means of production. What I mean there is, this is this extra here, okay? So it's not just in the labor power market, but there is an extra here, which I'm conceiving now as a subsumed class payment that the capitalists have to pay to whom? To other capitalists, because it's other capitalists that are producing these means of production. So this is an, uh, uh, an extra payment that some capitalists who need means of production are paying to still other capitalists who are producing and supplying those means of production, and hence they can sell their raw materials, their oil, and so forth for something extra, which in Marxian terms we're interpreting, we're, we're, we're understanding as a subsumed class payment of some capitalists to other capitalists. Okay. So in both cases, um, this is a, 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 a market phenomenon in which the capitalist expansion has increased cost to expanding capitalists. And, and that extra cost, that extra cost to the expanding capitalists is a result of capitalist expansion. So capitalist expansion has created its own effect. It's not something from outside the system, it's something inside capitalism in which the costs have risen because capitalists are expanding. Okay. Third, what's the impact of these extra costs? So let me get a clean board and focus on that. Capitalists get a surplus, and as, as we've gone through in this course, I'm going to break it up into two parts. They have the K star plus the lambda, that is, they have the subsumed class payment, the delta C plus delta V. They have everything else. I'll s sum it up. Managers, land, you know, distributions to managers, landlords, and so forth, etc. But now they have two new ones as a result of this expansion. They have the payments they have to make to the workers plus the payment they have to make to other capitalists to get means of production. So this is the market consequence of expansion. Okay. This one here, just let me just to make it very clear what this is, okay, this is the price of labor power that has to be paid then in the uh, market. So this is the, you know, the price of the labor power that's now greater than the value times all the workers. So that's the subsumed class payment that has to be made. Okay. This one is the price of the means of production minus the unit value of the means of production, which I'm assuming again is unchanged times, uh, sorry, times all the means of production here that are purchased, okay? So these are the two subsumed class payments that the capitalists have to make. The deviation of labor power from the unchanged, assumed unchanged value, the deviation of the uh, price of means of production from the un assumed unchanged value. And if you look, you, if you look at the, the, the whiteboard where you're sitting there, the inequality goes this way. Okay? So if I'm assuming an unchanged appropriation of surplus on the, from the workers, then the costs, the right-hand side, the demands on the surplus have risen because of this market change. Again, to remind you, I keep saying, repeating it so we don't lose it, the change resulting from the very capitalist expansion itself. Okay. Marx then argues, and there's no necessity for this, okay, he himself would have relaxed this, but I, just to get the point across, he argues that this inequality is a sign of crisis for the capitalists. Why? Because the demands on the surplus are greater than the surplus. So there's a variety of possibilities which should occur here. Number one, there could be pressure on the workers to increase their surplus as a result of this. The one he focuses on in, in volume one is the following.